In this video I will talk about developing a research topic. So if this is something you're interested in or are currently struggling with, this is the video for you. How to come up with a good research topic? What to investigate? What is a good research topic in nursing? What is a good research topic in business? What is a research topic in education? This kind of question is something that I see daily online. You also send me a lot of questions asking me about a good research topic in a specific field or sometimes asking me to develop a good research topic for you to which I usually respond that it's simply not possible. And in this video I'll explain both how to develop a good research topic, how to come up with an idea for a research topic, and also why it's simply not possible for me to give you a good research topic straight away. So basically the main message that I want to convey in this video and my main advice for how to develop a good research topic is whether you like it or not, to read a lot, to read plenty of academic literature more or less within that topic. So why is it so important? It's very important because firstly it will help you develop an idea for what you want to investigate and secondly you have to know what else has been done and said in a particular field if you want to investigate that field. Not only because you need to know whether there is a gap in research for example so you need to know how your study is positioned within that field but also to be able to argue later on what your study contributes. So whether it uh, dismisses uh, or rejects what has previously been done or it supports what has been done. Uh, so in either case it's not really important uh, what the outcome is. Meaning, I mean of course it's important but a lot of students seem to be worried that uh, they ask me what if my study doesn't bring anything new? What, what it doesn't? What if it's not you know controversial? What if it's not uh, dismissing what has previously been said? And my answer to that is that it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter at all. So your study, if it's uh, carefully planned, is always going to contribute to that field. So even if by adding a little bit more evidence to the existing evidence, it's still an important contribution. So don't worry, it doesn't, your study doesn't have to be always controversial, innovative and you know something groundbreaking and something completely new. So even if you're just adding more evidence to what has previously been said, it means you are contributing to that field. So uh, again, so this is one of the reasons why you need to read a lot. But the main reason is uh, you have to read a lot uh, simply because otherwise you will not know what you want to investigate and what uh, needs to be investigated. So now the first question what to read about? What kind of articles to read about? So firstly if you want to uh, conduct research I'm sure that there is some kind of a general field in which you want to conduct that research. Just like I said at the beginning when you're asking uh, about a good research topic in business and law and nursing that's what I mean that's the general field. Usually that field is determined by uh, what you're studying. So if you are a higher education student, if you're studying at university, you're studying something, right? So so this is obviously a starting point, uh, the general field in which you want to investigate or conduct your research. Sometimes uh, I am aware that you may not be studying at university. Actually I was surprised, positively surprised, how many of you uh, are high school students and you're asking about research and research topics. I was surprised because when I was in high school, to be honest, uh, I've never thought about research. I'm not sure if this is uh, because of your personal interests or whether this is a different education system where you're actually expected to do research. I'm not sure, but like I said, uh, I am positively uh, surprised. It's always good to uh, do research, to develop analytic thinking, critical thinking. So uh, yeah, but the problem is if you are, of course, in, in high school, for example, you don't have your research field. So you may not know what field you want to uh, conduct this research in. But if you still insist on conducting research, surely there is something in general that interests you. So something you've been thinking about. Maybe education in your country or uh, 
maybe as I said before some uh, some topics related to agriculture or uh, or law or business or anything so that's I mean you have to have some general starting point uh, for where to start reading so I cannot help you with with this uh, what general field you're going to investigate and explore but anyway so once you have this field once you have this general field uh, so let's use an example of education of course I'm familiar with this uh, field uh, this is something I always refer to so if you're studying education or if you're studying uh, for uh, a master's uh, in TESOL let's say surely there is uh, some uh, aspect of that general field that interests you more so maybe methodology of teaching for example so if there is that's uh, where you start exploring all this academic literature so just start reading everything that you can uh, get access to about this topic about for example as i said methodology of language teaching let's say this is something it's still very general it's still very broad but it's uh, let's say it's something you want to investigate so of course uh, so you start by searching this kind of uh, thing so uh, entering this kind of keywords methodology of language teaching you'll find plenty obviously hundreds thousands even of articles about the methodology of language teaching and research in that field so then uh, you're just gonna have to read these different articles I mean you may start with uh, literally exploring uh, the topics and seeing what, what it uh, what it is that seems to attract you more or interest you more and then you'll start uh, reading the actual articles of course you'll read plenty of different articles about different methodologies different organizations of uh, classroom different classroom management uh, techniques so how to manage the students how to organize the students in a classroom how to give, fe give feedback uh, what kind of activities to start the lesson with uh, how to ask questions so that your students respond uh, so all kinds of things as I said it's it's a broad it's a very broad field as uh, any other field is so but that's still your you know your starting point this is where you begin so as you read these articles pay attention to the literature review sections because they are the real gold mine for you here so what the literature review is is a section where the author reviews the previous literature and the previous research in particular so they review this research in order to show and demonstrate uh, the rationale for their study so why their, their study is needed or how it's going to contribute so while uh, so the good thing about uh, these literature reviews is that they review uh, dozens sometimes more uh, of previous research studies and previous research findings and you know controversies and and uh, points on which uh, scholars disagree and agree so this is a uh, don't feel overwhelmed just read uh, without pressure just read through these literature reviews and see what interests you again wh what it is that you think you'd like to pay more attention to so then you use the reference list of course to get access to these articles reviewed in the literature review and from there you uh, you read more and more so more and more specific articles so at this point your uh, focus is narrowing down a little bit so you're not uh, just reading about methodology of language teaching but for example as I said uh, let's say organization of uh, classroom activity so uh, you re realize that group work you've read uh, several references uh, to group work and how this works or doesn't work in different uh, countries which by the way is a very interesting topic uh, group work is a very popular method of organizing work uh, and students into groups but in some countries it simply doesn't seem to work I've I had to read a lot of, uh, about it uh, so I know it can be quite an interesting topic so let's imagine now you're paying attention to group work uh, so you're obviously uh, getting more access to more articles specifically about group work and as you read uh, ideas I'm um, inevitably ideas will start to come to your mind because maybe as I said maybe you, you've read that uh, in a given country group work didn't work because students were not used to this kind of uh, organization because they were used to more teacher-centered class as in uh, many Asian countries for example and you may be thinking that perhaps it's worth investigating this topic in your context so then you may start looking whether 
there have been studies in your context and reading and trying to find references to these studies. So again, you're constantly narrowing your focus down. And this is what happened uh, in my uh, PhD study. So let me tell you uh, just briefly what happened as I was preparing to conduct my study and come up with my research idea. So my first research idea, my general research idea and interest was non-native English speaker identity. So I thought uh, it's interesting how people who's, uh, for whom English is not uh, the mother tongue, it, well, I was interested in, in general in this notion of how they feel as you know speakers, whether when they communicate in English, whether they have they feel like have a different they have a different identity and they are different people. So this is how I started. But as I uh, was gaining access to these articles and reading about this identity, I realized that it's such a broad and vague term, this identity. So firstly, there are many different types of identity discussed in the literature. So there are non-native English speaker identity, there is a student's identity, teacher's identity, non-native English teacher's identity, native English teacher's identity, all kinds of identity uh, for different groups of people, migrant identity. And then there is uh, there are many types of identity itself. So uh, there may be cultural identity, professional identity, and language identity. So I began to realize that I have to focus on something a little bit more specific than simply non-native English speaker identity, because identity has not been uh, precisely defined. So I found uh, what I found appealing was this idea of language identity. I realized that. Uh, my starting point, w what I was interested in, was language. As I said, I was interested in how, uh, when we communicate, uh, non-native English speakers, uh, how we perceive ourselves as speakers, whether it affects our sense of self, of who we are, and this kind of thing. So, so I found this reference to language identity, and then, of course, I found this article. I used the uh, the literature, uh, the reference list at the end of the article uh, in which I found this reference. I found the original article on uh, on language identity, and the literature review there was a real goldmine for me, even better than the previous one. And why is that? Because this article was precisely about uh, the kind of identity I needed, so language identity. So their literature review was packed with references specifically to studies of language identity. So that's what I used for my subsequent uh, reading. So. Again, I had all these opportunities and all these articles uh, to read uh, all of a sudden. And at the same time, I realized that uh, I'm also interested in migrants' identity. So not just any non-native English speakers, not uh, students, for example, in an educational context, but migrants, migrants, adult migrants uh, who came to a given country uh, to work. And uh, I was interested in their language identity. So as you can see, my focus has been narrowing down from this very general idea of identity uh, to this very specific idea of migrants' language identity. And this is the whole uh, point of all this reading that I mentioned and all this reading that I encourage you to do. So your, uh, your knowledge really expands as you do this reading. So you become aware of, of these discussions in this field, you're becoming aware of, of all the different terms, like uh, in my case. And most importantly, you're becoming aware of what has been done and what has not been done. So you're, you're developing this idea for how you can contribute, for what to investigate, in which context, what context to focus on, what kind of participants, and all these uh, things. And you simply cannot do this uh, without having read all these articles. So it's absolutely crucial that you do all this reading. Before I come to tip number two, I hope you're enjoying this video so far. And if you are, please press that like button. And if you're new to this channel, consider subscribing. And now the second tip that I want to give you for how to develop a good research topic. And it's an extremely powerful and extremely relevant tip as well. So please listen carefully. So uh, apart from reading the literature review sections, uh, which, uh, as I said, is uh, aims to give you all this knowledge of the past, of what has been done in the past, of previous research. What else you may focus on is reading the uh, 
limitations and further research and conclusion, uh, conclusions sections. And why is that? So unlike the literature reviews, which as I said, describe the past and what has been done, these uh, final sections, they usually uh, tell you what needs to be done. So whether it's a conclusion or further research, usually what they basically say in these sections is, we have done this in this study, in our study, but in the future, uh, what would be uh, beneficial is conducting uh, this kind of study. So this kind of study, but for example, in another setting or with another method or whatever. So basically that's the purpose of this uh, further research section. So essentially what they are telling you is, uh, they are telling you what to do, what to investigate, which is great. And this is exactly what you need. And also the limitations sections, again, uh, what they say, is we have done this this way but the limitation and the way to improve this study in the future is to do it that way so for example uh, our study could be improved if somebody if we uh, implemented mixed methods approach so again for you this is great because you have just learned that this study this kind of study can be improved by implementing a mixed methods approach so so you may uh, think about uh, implementing including that approach in your study so again just to summarize so it's extremely important to read the literature reviews in order to gain this general knowledge of uh, of the field and what needs to be done what has been done and also these uh, final sections uh, limitations conclusions and further research because they are telling you what else needs to be done in the future. Of course, there is plenty more that you can do and you should do in order to develop a good research topic. So apart from this uh, general reading, uh, another thing that you have to do is organize that reading. So uh, somehow systematically categorize and organize this reading. So this will help you again, uh, simply not forget what you're reading. When you're reading uh, hundreds of articles a week, you're simply going to forget that. So it's very important to keep that organized. And another crucial thing is to uh, write, to be engaged in writing as you do that reading. So you have to uh, generally uh, write down your notes and observations and impressions and ideas. Uh, but also what helps is actually start writing about your idea and why it's important trying to explain it to yourself because then you will start to begin uh, you will begin to develop this idea for perhaps what's missing in, in your idea or what else you need to read and uh, just to make sure that in fact this study that you're thinking about is needed unfortunately in this video i will not have time to go into too much detail of uh, all these other techniques apart from reading so writing and organizing your reading materials uh, but if you're enjoying this content if you're finding this content useful i have a self-study course uh, i'll put the link in the description that you can get for just 9.99 if you follow the link in the description you can enroll and get a lifetime access to the course and the course is specifically about developing your research idea. So in that course, I uh, go through reading as well. So I have different uh, chapters in that course. All of these are video materials. And uh, I talk uh, in much more detail about this reading stage that I just uh, discussed. So I also uh, discuss where to find these uh, reading materials, how to gain access to these academic materials. And then I, I go on to discuss the writing stage uh, I even talk about thinking. So this sounds surprising, but I'll just I'll just leave it for you as a surprise if you decide to enroll in the course. But thinking is also an important skill that you have to develop. So I to I'm talking about reading, writing, and thinking. I really give a lot of powerful tips in that course. I talk about research questions and discuss different types of research questions, and also how to develop a good research question. And later on, I conclude by discussing how to incorporate all of that so the product of all that reading and writing and thinking and your research questions in your literature review to provide a nice rationale for your study so again if you're enjoying this content i think this course may be extremely relevant uh, for you and you can gain access to that course by clicking the link under the video so i hope again that you enjoyed this video Please press the like button if you did and if you're new to this channel, think about subscribing to it.